Those guys will. I, I call Maureen Pugh. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Speaker. And um, I congratulate um, my colleague David Seymour for his insightful contribution. Um, and one of the attributes that you failed to mention, sir, uh, of the qualifications along the government benches is business experience. And that's woefully lacking on the other side of this House, because if there was any, if there was even an iota of business acumen on the other side of this House, we wouldn't even be having this debate, sir. And I, I got a, a late call to speak to this bill, and I, I sat down to prepare. And, and you know, I was absolutely lost. I was lost because I just didn't know where to start. The ammunition for arguing against this bill is so rife. This is the most despicable piece of legislation that we have ever had to debate in this House. And the, the theme that has been coming across from this side of the House is about process. The, this bill has been devoid of process, and if it had have followed due process, we would have heard from the people in the sectors, we would have heard from the people in the communities, and we would have a much better informed debate. But no, we did not, and that's absolute disgrace that we're at this point. Now, we should have known we were going to be in for this when this government chose to make this announcement to a room full of university students here in Wellington. And how is it that this government has never had the gumption to turn up into Taranaki and talk to the people whose lives are going to be impacted? And this morning, I was subbed on to the same um, select committee this, uh, this morning. And, and here they were this morning, agreeing to travel to the West Coast to talk about white bait when they couldn't travel to Taranaki to talk about the most important industry in their region. White bait is bigger than the whole of the Taranaki region's community. Well, that is another disgraceful... Oh. So when, when did this um, government decide that they were going to refuse to hold their select committee in Taranaki? What, nobody knows the process that has been followed here. The, this was never signalled to the communities prior to the election. This was never mandated through the election. This here is an ideological idea that got a great headline in Paris. M Mr Speaker, I have to say, how do we look these people in the eye? They can't look me in the eye. Look at them. They can't look me in the eye. They have no answers for the people of New Plymouth. They've got no answers for the people of Waitara or Inglewood or Hawara or Patia. And you know the difference between those communities and the likes of Westport, Greymouth or Hokitika? The difference is you haven't got to us yet, but I know that you're coming and we're going to be ready for you. How many cycles of economic devastation do you need to see? How many, how many of these devastating economic cycles? I sat, in the, I sat in the select committee at the beginning of this debate, and it was absolutely resolute in their resolve to run roughshod over the democracy. Now, democracy needs informed citizens if it's going to survive. But this is not a democracy. When, when you truncate the, cotton, the um, submission process to the point that it was, you have absolutely no consultation with the sector prior to even writing the bill. You have eliminated the expertise. There were countless calls from submitters. They were asking, please consult more broadly, give us more time. At the very least, give us the statutory time, not this truncated process. We've heard about the submission from PEPANS, the Petroleum Exploration Production Association of New, Zealand, of New Zealand. They're a membership organisation that represents businesses producing 95% of New Zealand's petroleum. They have valuable expertise in this field, and it's a highly specialised field. They could have contributed in a valuable way to the writing of this bill. They could have contributed and helped inform the consideration of this bill. But instead, they had to limit their submission 
And, but they did, sir, note in their submission that had they had more time, they would have included a lot more information, and I quote from their submission, they would have talked to the unintended flow-on effects to the onshore sector, the broader economic effects of the decision that the regulatory impact statement covered. They would have talked to the consequence to the downstream energy sector, and they would have talked to the implications for shipping emissions from increased reliance on imports. Sir, this is a sad day for this House. And I can tell you that the fears up in the Taranaki are exactly the same fears that my own community on the West Coast have at the moment. We have seven working coal mines down on the coast, two producing coal for export, for steel making. They employ 843 people, including the sub-trades. They produced 1.2 million tonne of coal last year. And the estimated value of that was $334.5 million. There's five domestic coal mines employing 147 people, producing 285,000 tonnes, with an estimated value of $42 million. And another mine yet to be started of $72 million worth of value. Now, with the powers that is available to this government, private individuals and organisations are being forced into accepting the imposition of powers that were never granted to them. There was no mandate for that government to take this course of action. Mr Speaker, this uh, Crown Minerals Petroleum Amendment Bill was decided on on the back of an envelope by three leaders, and then I suspect they told the rest of their caucuses. The, I, I heard um, on the Select Committee um, the testimony or the submission from people like Bill Simpson. Now, he's a man I understand is very well connected in his community of Whitera. He drove four hours to make his submission. But what he didn't realise when he got there is that the Select Committee resolved at the beginning of the meeting to reduce the speaking time for all the submitters, all the submitters that were waiting out in the waiting room to make their submissions that they had prepared. So they had reduced the organisations down from 15 minutes to 10 minutes and they had cut in half the submission time for individuals. And they were prepared for their 10-minute submission and they got five. So this government was begged at the time by Bill Simpson and asked them what are they going to do for his town of 7,500 people with unemployment already at 58%. He was rudely cut off after five minutes and then the committee spent two minutes arguing about whether he could finish his last sentence. One more sentence to go and he was cut off. Mr Speaker, I have one, one more issue that I, two more issues that I'd like to bring up. One is what happens when you truncate a process and you do not allow time. Even in the departmental report, at the final draft, there were still mistakes being realised that were being amended. What other mistakes have been made that we don't know about or haven't had the time to have a look at? Mr Speaker, I have one last visual. This photo here, this is what that government lot over there hang their hat on and with a source of pride. But when I look at this photo, what do I see? I see stopping this, stopping that, stopping that and stopping that. This government is all about stopping stuff. But what it's done, it has stopped the development of communities. It has stopped the economic viability of some communities. And they do not survive. They do not thrive. You are spelling the death knell of the Taranaki. You are damaging New Zealand's reputation um, internationally. Please don't bring me into the debate. Don't use you. Oh, sorry, Mr Speaker. <laughs> that lot over there are damaging New Zealand's reputation. They're damaging our economic viability going forward. And I say shame on them, not only for the decision, but for the way the decision has been made. This is a very sad time for this country. We cannot reverse the damage, some of the damage that is being done. 
but, Mr Speaker, we live in hope that the uh, term of this coalition government is limited. I call Dr Deborah Russell. Mr Speaker, I am the chair of the Environment Select Committee um, that heard all the submissions on this bill. We spent